Lord. I love the song. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You telling your soul to bless the Lord. You tell every part of you to bless the Lord. You say, Lord, my soul, let my soul bless you. Let my soul bless you. Let my soul say something to you. Hallelujah. And the songwriter says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Father, this morning I pray that our soul will bless you. That every part of us, O oh God, will bless you. Every aspect of our lives will bless you. I pray this morning, Mary God, that Lord, your word will be a lamp to our feet today. And a light to our path. I pray that no one will go back the same here today, Father. I pray, Mary God, that Lord, you will touch hearts today, Father. I pray, Mary God, that Lord, everything, Mary God, that seemed to be doomed, everything that seemed to be going bad, Father Lord, with your word, Mary God, with your word of God, Father Lord, you will transform lives today. You will bring people back to you, Father. Those that have backslided, they will come back to you. Those that have don't know you more, Father Lord, will come back to you. They will know that, Lord, you love them so much. That's why you die for them. I pray, Mary God, that nothing will steal the word today. I pray, mighty God, that no demon will steal the word from the heart of the people. Now, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that as the atmosphere is charged to bring your word, I pray that nothing will hinder your word to touch hearts today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus, we we'll pray. Well, let the church say amen. amen. Come on now, let, me, let the church say amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody say, are you here this morning or this afternoon? Uh, you're not asking as if you're asking. <laughs> you, you're not asking as if you're asking. I say, are you here this morning? Ask the person, say, are you here this morning? Come on now, give a smile to the person. Come on, smile to somebody. You see, the thing is, probably you've not smiled since, this, since the beginning of this week. Come on, smile to somebody now. You are in church, hallelujah. Praise God, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for your lives. I say, I thank God for your lives. Oh, I say, I thank God for your lives. I thank God for who you are. I thank God for what God is doing in your lives. I thank God for his protection in your life. I thank God for keeping you. Amen. I thank God for protecting you. Amen. Some people came out, they never get in again. You know? Some people came into their car when they got outside. You know, they never came back to their home. But thank God you came out. You, you've been moving around. Amen. God is still with you. Amen. God is with you. And when God is with you, nobody will be against you. Amen. Praise God. I want to start with this lovely verse in the Bible. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. If you have your Bible, please turn to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And some people will turn to Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. A lovely passage which my brother mentioned about you know, when, he, when he brought the word uh, some weeks ago. But I want to re-echo that. I want to answer that. And then I will move on to my, te my text today, which is the question I'm going to ask you, a gap standard. Praise God. Uh, the question I'm going to ask is, uh, the, the text today is, are you a gap stander? So they say we've got to stand in the gap. Are you a gap stander? Now, this is a big question. I'm going to deal with that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, just turn your Bibles, please. Are, are you having your Bibles? You should not come to church with our Bibles. Amen. You should not come to church with our Bibles. Amen. I, I can make it a song. You should not come to church with our Bibles. Amen. Because that's where, that's your sword. The Bible is your sword. Amen. It is your sword. When a farmer goes to farm, he goes with his machet. He goes with his equipment. Amen. Praise God. So this is your sword. Amen. So you're there? Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Are you there? Praise God. We're going to do some interactive something today. Amen. If you're there, stand boldly. If you're not there, say, please help me. Yeah? Yes, you can stand boldly and say, and say what it is. Are you going to read uh, Luke chapter 4? Okay. Let's go. Luke chapter 4, 18. Let's go. Now, I want you to say it boldly because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. So you've you got to say it boldly. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
you see, you don't have to be afraid to say it. Say it boldly. Come on, let's go. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now you go to the next verse and tell me exactly why the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Come on, let's look at that. Amen. Are you there? Praise God. Tell me why the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. That's it. Amen. You just don't say the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because of the reason. There's a reason why He's upon you. Praise God. And, 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 and you see exactly why He's there. Amen. He's there because He has anointed you to preach the good news to the poor. Amen. So you don't just carry the Spirit for nothing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. You are a spirit. Amen. You have been... You have been made out of the image of God. And in Genesis it says that the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the God said, Let us make man out of our own image. And if God is a spirit, you are spirit. Is that making sense? Am I making sense here? You are spirit. Amen. So that's why Jesus, when he started his first, his first, his first mission, that's why he said, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now let's go trace that point out in, 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 uh, in Isaiah 61. Is there. Isaiah prophesied, he said that before even Jesus said it. Are you in Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2? Amen. I want you to cooperate with me now. Amen. I'm going somewhere. The question I'm asking today, are you a gap stander? Standing in the gap. Are you really a gap stander? Can you stand in the gap? Amen. Now we're going to look at that. Praise God. Isaiah 61. Let's go look at that quickly. Yeah? Is it? What is it saying again? So Isaiah prophesied that before Jesus said it. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah said that before Jesus said it. So Isaiah said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Sovereign Lord. Some of you say the Spirit of the Lord. Now the Spirit of the Lord has got a purpose. So that's what we have established. To bring the good news. Now that takes me to my text today, which is, are you a gap stander? Now the, the theme for the three months, um, Pastor Jamie says that we're going to look at um, uh, uh, standing in the gap. It's not minding the gap. Do you know that? It's not minding the gap. When you go to London, they tell you, mind the gap. Amen? Oh, no, there are no Londoners here. No Londoners here, you know. But when you go to London, they say, mind the gap at the train station. Mind the gap. You see that, yeah? At the train station, they say, mind the gap. Which means there is a space between where you're coming off. Network rail, or you're going to sue, uh, uh, travel, what, what, what the company is. Amen. So, that they say, mind the gap. But we are saying, according to our, uh, uh, our, our uh, theme for this three months, we are saying, standing in the gap. There's a big difference. Mind in the gap and standing in the gap. Praise God. Amen. So let me, let me flag now. Let me take you now to, to Ezekiel chapter 22. We're going to look at exactly why we're going to be a gap stander. Why we must stand in the gap. Why we must stand in the gap for our marriage. Why we must stand in the gap for our children. Why we must stand in the gap for our lives. Why we must stand in the gap in every aspect of our lives. Why we must stand in the gap. And we're going to look at some of the characteristics of a gap standard. Receptive. Amen. 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 Let, let look at, let's look at um, Ezekiel chapter 22. Now let me, let me, let, from, from verse 23. We're going to go down to verse, from verse 23 to verse 30. And the reason why I want us to look at that particular scripture, verse by verse, if you're going to follow me, you will see exactly what happened in Israel, in Jerusalem. And you will see that some of these things that happened in Jerusalem that time, yeah, we have them happening now. We see a lot of these things happening now. So that gives us the reason why we must stand in the gap. That gives us the reason why we must push back the things that are about to happen. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me give you a look at it. Now, number one, let, let, let's see that. Please, God, let's, let's look at that. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, the Bible says, verse 23, begins from verse 23. And the Lord came to me. Uh, who's saying something here? Who's saying something? The, Lord, the word of the Lord coming here. It's Ezekiel himself saying, the word of the Lord came to me. Now, this is what Ezekiel got from the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Ezekiel got this from the Lord. He said, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man. That's what he called him. He said, son of man. Say to earth. Who is it referring to here? Say to earth. It's referring to who? Jerusalem. Say, say to Jerusalem. Say to earth that you are a land that is not cleansed. Or rain. On the day of indignation. On the day of indignation. You are not cleansed. You are not, you are, you are not, you are not rain on the day of indignation. In other words, you are not cleansed. You are not, you are not, you are, you are not rain on the day of my hunger. You are not cleansed at all. Son of man, listen to me. This is what he said. Son of man, tell these people that they are not cleansed. They are not cleansed. They are not rain. And then he went on to say, the conspiracy of our prophets in our midst. It's like a roaring lion tearing the prey. Prophets tearing the prey. And anyway, he says that they have devoured people. They have taken treasures and precious things. They have made many widows in our midst. They have destroyed these people. They have destroyed, I mean, just if you just follow that. They have destroyed, the prophets have been saying all sorts of things. So when we go down, we'll see exactly what they have been saying. And we see these things happening today. False prophecy. People saying what God did not tell them. They prophesy wrongly. A prophet is somebody who gets inspiration from God. And speak exactly the voice of God. And it comes to pass. Amen. Praise God. Are you following? Now let's go. Amen. And then it says what? It said they devour the people. They have taken treasures and precious things. They have made many widows in our midst. They have made many widows. So if they have made many widows, what does that mean? They have killed all the men. Amen. They kill all the men. All the women are left now. Those men who are married, they kill them. They have caused destruction in the land. They have done a lot of wicked things. They have done something that I, can't, I don't want to see at all. That's what God is telling Ezekiel. Go and tell us people. This is exactly what they have done. And God is saying the same thing now that they have done a lot of things. A lot of things have been happening in the world. Listen, brethren. Look, we don't need to. I don't even need to tell you that Jesus is coming again. I don't need to tell you. Amen. I don't need to tell you. I mean, there's there are a lot of signs that he's coming back. There are a lot of things happening in the world. There are a lot of things happening which we can relate with exactly what God said to Ezekiel to tell the people. Then let's go back. Are you with me? What verse are we now? What verse? Oh, good. Very good, students. You are completing. Amen. Verse 26. They say, A high priest, I violated my law and profaned my holy things. Profane, make it dirty. A lot of things happening in churches today. A lot of things happening. We'll see exactly what he said. He said, they have profane. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy things. Our glory. Everything goes. They have not distinguished the holy things. The things that are holy, they have not even separated them. They cannot even tell what is holy. I mean, you go to the body of Christ today, we see a lot of things happening. A lot of things happening. That's why we have to be gap standers. That's why we have to stand in the gap before Jesus comes. That's why we have to stand in the gap before destruction comes in the church. That's why we have to stand in the gap before God pour down his wrath. Because a lot of things are happening in the world of Christ. A lot of things are happening in the world of Christ. What is happening today is that things that are bad, they call them good. Things that are good, they call them bad. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Now, it's not me saying it, but it's there in the Bible. Now look at what it says now. I said they have made known the difference between they, they have made known the difference between the un, unclean and clean and, and that they have hidden the highs from my Sabbath, so that I am profane among them. Her princes in the in the midst are the, the wolves, sharing the prey, to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest. Amen. Now let 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 let, let look at the key verse now. The key verse is where? If you look at it, if you're following. Where's the key verse we're looking at now? The key point. The key point. In what verse? It's in verse 30. Let's look at 30 and 31. Verse 30 and 31 says, it says, So, now, after all, they've done all these things in, the, in Jerusalem. After they've done all. Now, God says, listen, I, 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 am, 
I am not a wicked God. I'm not a bad God. I want, to call, I want to do something, but before I do it, but somebody need to stand. Somebody need to talk to me. Somebody need to relate with me. Somebody need to say, listen, Lord, don't pour your wrath on these people. Don't do anything bad. Don't do anything to destroy no, God is so good to us. I'm, he said, I'm looking for somebody now. Look at what he says in verse 30. So I sought for a man among them. He's looking for a man among these destructive people. One of the things that you must know, that everything that we have done on earth, somebody came and stand in the gap for us. Jesus came. He stood in the gap. That's why he said, for, joy, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He stood in the gap for us. We should have been dead and gone because of our, of our unrighteousness and because of things that we've done. But Jesus was the first man that stood in the gap for me and you. He stood in the gap. He went all and said, Father, no, I'm going down. I'm going down to save thy people. I'm going down after Adam fell. He said, I'm coming down now so that I can stand in the gap for them. And he came. He's the first person that stood in the gap. We can see that. We will see that in Galatians 4, verse 4 to 5. But let, let, let's, let's look at this now. It says, And I sought for a man among them. I sought for a man among them. Listen, God is looking for a man among us. He's looking for a man and a woman among us. Not only to stand in the gap for this church, but he's looking for a man among us to stand in the gap for Blackburn. He's looking for, for, for men and women to stand in the gap for this nation. Is looking for somebody to stand in the gap. That's why I say, are you a gap stander? It's looking for somebody. It's not looking for complacency. Looking for comfortability. If you, listen, you have to come out of your comfort zone if you really want to make people's lives change. You have to come out of your comfort zone. You have to come out from your complacency. He says, I am looking for somebody. I don't want to... Pour my wrath on these people. I love Jerusalem so much. I love Blackburn so much. I love England so much. I love Europe so much. I'm looking for somebody who will stand in the gap and push the demon powers away. Push people away from drugs. Push people away from prostitution. Push people away from depression. I'm looking for somebody that will stand in the gap. That's what he's saying. I'm looking for somebody. But who is going to stand? Who is going to say, I am? I am the one who is going to stand in the gap. Who is going to say, listen, I will sacrifice my life. I will stand in the gap. I will wake up 2 o'clock in the morning. Pray until 4 in the morning. I will wake up 2 o'clock in the morning. Walk down to the street and pray in the street. Take back the, the glory that God wants. Take it back from the devil. Hallelujah. He's looking for somebody like you and me. He's looking. But the thing is, we love our bed. We love our food. We love everything that he has given us. We love it. There is no sacrifice. He said, I'm looking for somebody. Look at what he said. I'm looking for someone. I sought for a man among them in that particular environment, in that particular community. I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for somebody in Grace Pentecostal. Among you guys, I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for somebody who would sacrifice his life to pray. He's looking for somebody. They say, I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for one, one among them who would make a wall, build a wall, and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. I'm looking for somebody that will stand before me. Let me illustrate to you what, what, what happened when it comes to that particular point. Boss, come. Come, 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 boss. Let me show you what happened. You will have to come again, but this time you take a different position. Micah, come. Stand here. He's looking for somebody who's going to stand in the gap. But you know what happened? For us to stand in the gap, we're going to fight, about, you know, we're going to fight some, 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 some stuff in our lives. Now, this is the body, this is the soul. And this is Mr. Spirit. Mr. Spirit says, hey, I am in church of this soul. I am in church of this body. And Mr. Soul said, no, you are not in church because when I want to eat, I tell the, the spirits, keep, just keep away. I will need to get my food. I need to eat. Because the soul is the, is the, is the emotion. The soul is your mental faculty. It's the soul that you, you feed so much. 
that even when you sleep at night, you snore. Amen? Thank you for your enthusiasm. The Spirit says, come on, I want you to get up now. Something is happening in Blackburn. The people are taking drugs. A lot of things are happening. The Spirit is saying, get up, stand in the gap. Get up, get up right now. Stand. They are about to shoot somebody. They are about to kill somebody. What I need to do, I want you to stand in the gap and push that spirit. And push that demonic power. And push that demon that is going into the inside of people that makes them to take drugs, to, take, to be prostitutes. That's what the Spirit man is telling the soul and is telling the body to move. But they say, the soul says, no, I can't, no, 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 I can't get out. It's not possible. No, 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 no. In fact, as a matter of fact, the soul will tell the spirit, listen, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn my position on the bed. Let me just change my position. And the body is still standing there waiting to act. This man is just waiting to act. Because this man, this pair, is going to tell this one, move. This one is going to say, I need you to move right now. And then this will push this one, and this one will push this one, and then they start to act. That's the time this body will get up from the bed and run to the, to the city of Blackburn and begin to say, I take authority against heavy drug addict. I take authority against heavy addiction. I take authority over every demonic process, every foul spirit, every demonic powers. I push them back. I push them back. They shall not act. They shall not act over these people. They shall not act over these people. I superimpose the blood of Jesus against the power. I superimpose the blood of Jesus. Let the power of God be upon them. This one wants to do that. But this one says, let me sleep. And this one is saying, do it. Do it. God says, he's looking for somebody to stand in the gap. These people are about to die. These people are about to die. The spirit man is telling the soul, move. Tell this man to get up. So I look for a man to stand in the gap. Now out of all these words, the one that have got so much effect. The one that when you feed that one, when you feed this man well, when you feed the spirit well, <laughs> when you feed him well, and how do you feed the spirit man? You feed the spirit man with the power of the word of God. You feed him with fasting and praying. Ah, this man doesn't like it because you have with fasting and this one says i need my food i need my baking i need my, my i need my hamburger i need my mcdonald's this one is saying give me give me and this one is saying no you will need to stand in the gap the only way we can stand in the gap step fast and this one is still standing he's just with you to act are you with me church are you with me so until we get that awareness be seated please thank you until we get a awareness, God is still saying, I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Listen, you can't stand in the gap with the flesh. The flesh will not manifest. Listen, when you stand in the gap with the flesh, my God, you are wasting time. You must stand in the gap with the spirit. Stand. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. When you feed the spirit man, what you start to get? You start to get revelation. You start to get revelation. That's the time you will pray and somebody's face will just come. Somebody's face will just come. Oh, why is, is this that's so and so? No. The reason is, you have to start praying for that person. Maybe that person is going through something right now. You start praying. But you don't get this revelation when you keep feeding the flesh. You don't get the revelation when you don't spend time with the word of God. You gotta stand. That's why I said, are you a stander? Are you really a gap stander? Do you like your bed? Do you like your food? Do you like everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness? You know what I mean? Everything pertains to life and godliness. For you to be a gap stander, you have to be somebody that will sacrifice your life. Sacrifice. Jesus said, I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna come down so that I will sacrifice myself. I will sacrifice my life just for these people. Just for your salvation. Just for my salvation. Just for your redemption. Just for my redemption. He's looking forward for that kind of person. That's why in this church, we must be a gap stander. Listen, you cannot bring them in when you don't pray them there. Pray them first. Pray them in. 
You're going to pray them in. When you pray them in, you know what happened? When you go to minister to people in the street, after you have prayed and prayed, as soon as you start to open your mouth and begin to talk about the love of God, begin to share about the love of God. Listen, you have so much happiness because you are, you are going to get a reception from the people. But you don't go and say, well, Jesus loves you. Let me cast the demon that is in you. Ah! I say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. He will ask you, who are you? As a matter of fact, if you are not careful, he will slap you and then you go away. Because you have not prepared yourself. No military man go to war without preparation. No. You can't drive without learning how to drive. Amen. <laughs> You're going to learn how to drive. Amen. You're going to learn how to drive. So, as from today, you're going to learn how to develop your spirit man. Develop your spirit man. How do you develop your spirit man? You develop your spirit man through the word of God. Search the word of God. Amen. Meditate upon the word of God. And then the other thing you need to develop your spirit man, you get to develop your spirit man through prayer. Pray. <laughs> Listen, we'll be talking about 300, 300, 300, 300 people to come to the church. We need to pray. We need to pray. They don't just come. Pray. You need to pray. Pray when you energize yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I said, read that. Isaiah 61 for us. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. John chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus said that. He said that. So are you going to say the Spirit of the Lord is upon you when you don't pray? Are you going to say the Spirit of the Lord is upon you when you don't search the Word? When you don't look at the Word of God? You wake up in the morning, go to work, come, no, no, nothing, no. you don't even have any agenda for God. But you have an agenda for yourself. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot stand in the gap. You cannot push back those demonic forces. You can't. Amen. You can't do that. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of a gap standard. And we're going to look at one of them. Amen. You must be a prayer warrior. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now that's one of the things that I want to, I want to take time to let you understand. For, you, for those of you who are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, by the manifestation of speaking in tongues, you must yearn for it. You must yearn for it. Now, I'll tell you a story. As, a, as a, a, a great preacher man, who went somewhere, and then he said, and you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, is, it's, it's the Holy Ghost himself that will baptize you. Not so. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that baptizes you. Not man. Man is not going to baptize you. It's the Holy Spirit that baptizes you, and then you have the manifestation of speaking in tongues. Amen. Whether they lay hands on you or not. Amen. The Spirit has to baptize you in it. So that you start to speak in tongues. And so this man called for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like I'm preaching now. I say, all those of you who would like to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Come and line up here. Line up here. <laughs> and all these guys came up. And there was a lady. Amen. There was a lady who had just done her hair. Amen. She just done her hair nicely. And uh. She was so careful, you know, of that, that man putting a hand on the head. And this hair is not like the normal hair. It's like, it's like the pure African hair where they braid it and it's tight. It's so tight, you know, just done. And she wanted to be baptized. And it was, it was. So when she came forward, when all the people, are, that's why I said, it's not you that baptizes the Holy Spirit. And the man put his hand on this lady's head. And he was saying, receive, receive it. Re receive this thing now, receive. And this lady was, ah. the hand was there because <laughs> you, you don't baptize people. The Holy Spirit will have to baptize. And, and, and he put his hand on this lady's head and, and the lady was twisting her face because she was feeling the pain of the hair. She was feeling the pain. And, and, and our, our African ladies here will tell you what, what it means to have that tight, braided hair. It stretched it stretch the muscle. Amen. You can see some of them are laughing. 
They must have gone through the experience. It stretched the muscle, the, 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 the vein there, it stretched it. Because when it's, when it's newly done, it's, it looks very attractive. I think some of them do that more or less, you know. So probably they, they, some of them do that to get their first husband. I, I'm sure you didn't do that. But... <laughs> Praise the Lord. So she had this problem on her head. And here is this man who wants to baptize. Come and look at this now. He wants to baptize the lady. And this lady was there standing. And, and he put the head, his hand on his head. And he said, receive it, receive it. She is not receiving anything. The only thing that she was receiving, she was receiving pain. So baptism of the Holy Ghost don't come through pain. It doesn't get pain in it. Hallelujah. God, Jesus said, freely you receive, freely you give. And so she had this pain, she had this pain. And all of a sudden, for her to, re- to relieve herself, herself from the pain, she started to say, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then the man would say, yeah, receive, 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 receive. The lady was just faking. You don't fake the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The reason why she did that is for that man to take his hand off her head. What am I saying? Baptism of the Holy Spirit is very important for you to stand in the gap. Because once you start to bask in tongues, once you start to pray in the Holy Ghost, you are speaking other language that is connecting to God. You are speaking the mind of God. And right from that point, when you start to pray in the Holy Spirit, you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which all of you here, I will implore you all, if you haven't got it, yearn for it. Yearn for it. Look for it. Desire for it. Because it helps your prayer language. It helps your prayer life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, I think uh, from verse 25 to 27, around about, it says that we don't know what to pray about. It's the spirits. The spirits that teaches us how to pray. Hallelujah. And the, man, and the spirits make intercession for us. Amen. Are you with me, church? And so you must have that. You must have that. You must be baptized in the Holy Ghost if you really want to be a back, a, a gap stander. And you know, for, for sure you know what a gap is. A gap is an opening. A gap is something that you need to feel. A gap is something that you need to close. In those days when, they, when the people of Israel, um, they build walls. And, and, and when they build these walls, what they do is that when they want to, to enter you know, they have, the enemies want to really uh, enter into your territory. They will use some heavy stuff to hit the wall. They will be hitting the wall. Because once they create that opening, amen, once they create that opening, it will be easy for them to enter into the city. So they need people who will stand by that wall to defend the wall, to build a fence around the wall. That's why the Bible says, you can see here, it says, I sought for a man, amen, among them who would make a wall. And stand in the gap. Make a wall. Keep that wall. Keep it so that nobody will come. He's looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Make a wall. Wall against what? Wall against principalities and power. Ephesians 6 from verse 10. Going down. They say we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Listen to me. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Amen? We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against spirits. We are fighting against principalities and powers. Principality, it means geographical areas of demonic activities. Geographical area. Every area in Blackburn. Let's say now. That's what you have to understand. When it comes to warfare, amen? When it comes to warfare, you have to have strategy. Strategy. And, and, and the military man who goes to fight in Iraq, they just don't go there. Amen? They just don't go there. When we had the war in Sierra Leone, the people just don't go fight. They, fight, they, they sat down and have a, a, a meeting. They have a meeting. All the elders, all the soldiers, the tough guys, they have a meeting. It is the same thing in the realm of the spirit. Principalities. They have a meeting and they strategize their attack. Amen? They strategize their attack. They look at the areas they have to attack. It's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. He said, we're fighting against, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities. 
those geographical areas, if the principality that operates in Blackburn is a principality that, that have demon power for drug addiction, that have demon powers for, for prostitution, that's how they operate. Amen? And they must have their headquarters somewhere. Oh, I don't want to go into the, the demonology thing. Amen. So they, they operate in geographical areas. So that area, that's why you see, if you go to Las Vegas, the principality that is operating Las Vegas is gambling. There's a spirit of gambling. That's why some areas, if you go there, if you have, when you go there, you will be tempted to do. Because that's the principality, that's the power that is operating in that area. You go to Holland. You go to Holland, there is a place called the Red Light Street. That is prostitution. That's the principality that is holding that area. That area is purely prostitution. Even in Germany, some areas, there are strategic areas where they have put some kind of demonic activity. And unless you stand in a gap, 2 o'clock morning, 3 o'clock morning, and begin to push back. You're pushing back those powers. You're sending back to where they belong. You're pushing them in prayer. You're pushing them in, 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 in spiritual warfare. You push them back. That's why even in your home, even in our homes, we need to know what kind of operation is taking place. What kind of powers that are operating in our lives. We need to establish that in our lives. Some people, they have stagnation. They can't move forward. They can't move. They can't, they can't. Just do anything by themselves. You need to stand in the gap and say, enough is enough in my life. I need to push forward. I need to do something. That's why I started. I said, don't be a complacent Christian. You cannot be complacent. You need to fight. You need to fight. The, the, listen, the devil is one of the most relentless fighters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Number two. You must be a faster. <laughs> you must be somebody who, who pray and fast. Amen. I don't want to say how many of you fast. Who, how many people do like to fast? Yeah, no, I don't want to ask that question. The Bible says whatever you are doing is between you and God. Amen. Amen. But if you look at Matthew chapter seventeen twenty one, it said this one will not go except with fasting and prayer. That's some stubborn. Stubborn, stubborn habits, stubborn problems, they will not go except you fast and pray. Maybe you say, well, okay, Alfred, that's your idea. I don't need to fast. <laughs> it's a decision. But the Bible says that this one will not go. To not go to you fast and pray. So if you want to stand in the gap, are you ready to fast? Are you ready to fast? I'm not talking about people who have medical condition, but you are healthy, you are okay to fast and pray. Are you ready to fast and say, listen, I'm going to take this week, I'm going to take three days to fast for that demonic power of prostitution that is in that particular location. And then when you are fasting and praying in the evening, you go around that area, you pray, you pray them out of that area. Uh, this is what happens. Praise the Lord. So, Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. It will go until you fast and pray. In, Ma in Psalm chapter 109, verse 10. I'm just giving you this reference. And the other thing you must do as a gap stander, you really want to stand in the gap for your family? You really want to gap, stand in the gap for your, for your spouse or your children? You want them to see exactly what God wants to do in their life? You must be sensitive to the demonic powers. Hallelujah. For the gift of discernment. The gift of discernment. The gift of discernment. The gifts. The gift of discernment. If you go to 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 to 11, it gives you all the gifts. Do you know that some people are gifted? They have this spiritual gift. That even as we are sitting down here, if something strange is happening, huh? if some demonic thing strange is happening in the church, they will pick it straight away. They will just pick it. They will say, oh, something's wrong. And then they will just go somewhere and begin to pray. And begin to pray. And begin to pray. Listen, this is not a cultural thing. This is physical. This, these are things that are real. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where we're all children of God. Amen. We're all children of God. But these are things that are real. 
You don't wait until you see it and believe it. No. Amen. Right. So, so we must have number five, number four. Is it number four? Are you writing? Amen. So we must have a relationship with God and your friends or brothers and sisters. Listen, he said you must have a relationship with God. Now, I want to ask one question now, not to embarrass anybody. How many of you know my name? All right. All right. Everybody. Everybody know my name. Everybody. So which means you can stand in the gap for me, right? Right? Eh? Amen? You can stand in the gap for me. You can pray for me. You know my name. You know exactly. You, see, you can see me in your spirit. Now, now the thing is, how do you want to stand in the gap for somebody that probably you don't know his name? You don't have a relationship with. You don't even talk to the person. You are depending on the spirit to tell you, oh, stand in the gap for Anna. You are depending. Listen, you must have something. Something. The church is a family. We must love each other. We must have some kind of relationship. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Am I making sense here? We, we, we need to know each other. Listen, when I sit at home, I know where everybody sits. <laughs> I know where everybody sits. I'll tell my wife, oh, I, I see you here. That's where you sit. That's where, that's where, of course, that's where Mark sits. I know. Yeah? So wh what does that mean? If even I don't know your name, I have an image of you. Right? I have an image of you. And if I want to pray, I can pray against anything that is happening in that life. But the bottom line is that you, if you have a relationship with God and you don't have a relationship with man on earth, then I'm questioning how come you're becoming a Christian. You must love people. Christianity is all about love. It's all about peace. It's all about relationship. We must love people. Praise God. We must love. I mean, God said, for God so loved the world. It's love. We don't need to hate each other. We've got to love somebody. If you hate the prostitute, if you hate the guys there, how are you going to stand in the gap for them? How are you going to push back those things that are disturbing them? If, you're going to, if you don't like me, how are you going to stand in the gap? Of course you will stand in the gap for, for the devil to, to, to hit me more and more because you hate me. Are you with me, church? This is real. I like to preach real. You know? We're going to love each other. In my, irrespective of our race, our color, we're going to love each other. Because you are not you. You are not yourself. God made you. You came from your mother's womb. You came from your father's loin. And you came on earth, hallelujah, to fulfill the destiny that God has given to you. To fulfill the purpose for which he has brought you. And one of the key purposes he brought you to this world, to love one another. Maybe it's in the scripture. Let's look. Probably we can find it somewhere. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Let's look at it. I want us to look at Matthew 7 verse 12. Are you there? Matthew 7 12. Can somebody read it? Matthew 7 verse 12. We're going to love. We can, you can't stand in the gap if you don't love somebody. Are you there? Yeah, yeah? read for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So, do unto others... As you want him to do to you. Amen. Come on. Do you want respect? Respect somebody. Praise God. Do you want somebody to pray for you? Pray for the person. Do you, do you want honesty? Be honest to people. Praise God. So do it. And then we'll see in, in Matthew chapter 22 verse 39. Look at that for me quickly. Do unto others. And it's so, so important in the church today. The body of Christ, I mean, we, we, we find ourselves in the body of Christ where, where everybody is fighting everybody. For what? Why do I have to fight my fellow brother? I don't have to fight Ski. <laughs> He's my brother. I don't have to fight Mark. I don't, I don't have to fight anybody. Amen. They are brothers. We're all brothers and sisters. If I need something from him and he has got it, I go to him, my brother. I need to let you teach me this. Amen. If I need to play the guitar, well, I come to Mark. Mark, can you show me how to play GC? As open as that. Amen. I'm, I'm talking to the church. Amen. We need, we need to love each other. We need to embrace each other. 
You didn't just embrace the person when the person comes from, uh, when the person is entering the church. You embrace the person with love. You embrace the person with prayer. When somebody is in need, when the person, the person is going some stuff, pray for the person. Because the testimony is for the reputation of God. Hallelujah. Do you know when he said it's for your namesake? You know what that means? For your namesake. It's for the reputation of God. Hallelujah. Right, let's look at that scripture. What does it say? Now look at that scripture before we, we land. Matthew chapter 22 verse 39. Are you there? Yes. Hold it, hold it. What did he say? Love your neighbor. So who is your neighbor? Is this, next, this man? Is he your neighbor? Everybody. Everybody is your neighbor. Everybody. Hallelujah. So who is your neighbor? Come on, give God a cry. Hallelujah. That's your neighbor. Come on, come on, I'll Love your neighbor yeah. as yourself. Hold it there. Love your neighbor as yourself. The problem we have is that we don't love ourselves. We, you, you're going to love yourself first. You, you're not going to look at yourself and say, well, look at me. <laughs> how, how do I look like this? No. No. You are wonderfully, fearfully, you have been coined. You have been coined by God. Hallelujah. So love yourself. That same love you give to yourself, you extend it to the next person. That same love you give to yourself, you extend it to the person. Even when the person is going through some things, you have show your love. You don't even know what the person is going through, but you show your love. Amen. Am I blessing somebody here? Praise God. Don't let your, your woes and your sorrows and, and everything kick people away. No. They can help you to pray. You know, sometimes we are stressed out. We come to church. The stress is so much. We have some stuff inside, working inside of us. Hey, and somebody just come to give you a hug. Oh, my God. When they look at your face, they say, oh, my. What have I done to this woman? You've not done anything. It's just because the person is going some, through some stuff. And he doesn't want to hide it. And he show it to you. And you don't know. Hallelujah. Let's love ourselves. Make that phone call. Send that text to your friend. Say, hi, how are you doing? Hallelujah. This is a very small church. Amen. Let, let, let's get connected. We get connected to each other. We never know when we will need somebody. We never know when we will need each other. Let's get connected. Let's have a free heart, a free mind, a free spirit. Praise God. That makes you a gap stander. That makes you the man that wants to stand in the gap. Makes you the man that says, listen, I'm not going to take it. My sister is going through this problem. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to push back those powers. I'm going to say, listen, I'm going to stand and kick that arrow. I'm going to stand and pray for my sister until the testimony comes. Because the testimony is not for me. The testimony is for the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going to stand. Hey, hallelujah. I feel excited now. You're going to stand. Help the person to pray. Help Daniel to pray. Daniel has got a dream. And hold Daniel's hand. And say, Daniel, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are going through, Daniel. Whatever dream in your heart. Whatever thing that you want to do. Let God be arise. Let God arise. Let the enemy be scattered. Let the thing come to pass. Let it come to pass. That's what you need to do, brothers. Glory to God. Praise God. We're going to do that. And if I tell you, if we're going to do that, listen to me. When the three to five thousand people come into this church, they see love. They are coming to bask in love. They bask in love. They see love. They see how we embrace them. They see how we are taking them. My God, my God. You know what they do? They will go and call. Come. Remember, the woman said, come and see. Come and see. The man who told me everything about myself. Because Jesus showed the love to her. The Samaritan woman, he showed the love to her. And she went and become the evangelist for the day. Amen. Do you want to be a back gap stander? Do you really want to stand in the gap? Do you really have this idea to stand in the gap? You must love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, glory. I can't believe you're sweating and it's cold. <laughs> and this is Blackburn. You don't, you don't sweat in Blackburn, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So in closing, brethren, we must have this relationship with our fellow brothers and sisters. Seek them. Get the body here. 
How many of you have got a body? Huh? How many of you have got a body here? A body. Somebody use your, your clothes. Somebody you can just you can just talk freely to. Have you got a body? How many of you? Now everybody's looking at me now. Am I your body? <laughs> your friend. Somebody you can just say, Hi man, how are you doing? You know? Somebody if you can just walk up to the house, hey, hey, come on, lean out. I need a cup of tea. Hey, what's you know, that's that's what we do. You know, you have a good friend, you just say, here. What's up, right? Are we on a cup of tea? Yes. Huh? If you go to the house, you get some nice puff puff. Amen. <laughs> some nice cakes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know if I go to Vicky's house, I will get some nice cakes. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, brethren, this is what happens. This is what we need in church. And this will draw people to you. This will draw. You know what? It's not to twist the face. The face, if you, if, it, if the face is going to be twisted, it will twist, it will twist, twist itself. Amen? Don't worry. Because if you cannot fix it, why do you worry? Huh? Why do you worry if you cannot fix it? And if you can fix that problem, why do you have to worry again? Praise God. Now, let me land now. Amen. So, we must have a relationship. We look at Matthew. We must be sensitive to the atmosphere. And in Acts chapter 13, verse 4 to 12, we must be sensitive to the atmosphere. Remember this guy? I think it was Peter who was, who was going, he was going on, his, on, on his mission, and uh, he was going to preach, and this young lady came and started to say, Oh, this man is the, is the most wonderful man of God. I mean, this is the son of God. This is, the, this is the, an apostle of God. It was, she was just saying everything. And Peter said, I rebuke that spirit in you. Now, what happened? Peter was sensitive to the demonic atmosphere. He was sensitive to that, to that thing that is playing inside of that lady. Because there's some fake spirits. Fake spirit that want to honor you. Fake spirit that want to glorify God. There's some fake spirit. So you have to be sensitive. Be sensitive around. Be sensitive in your office. Be sensitive in the church. Be sensitive. Sensitive. And you cannot get that sensitivity when you don't have a relationship with God, or you cannot have that sensitivity when you don't meditate on the word and pray. You have to be sensitive. Peter was very sensitive to this woman in a lying spirit. Are you with me? Praise God. Amen. Lastly, because of time, we must work in the spirit. This is the other thing. Work in the spirit. Galatians 5, from verse 16 to 26. It's a very popular scripture. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. It means the spirit should abound. You must walk in the spirit. Always walk in the spirit. Listen to the spirit man. Don't listen to the flesh. Always walk alongside with the spirit. What the spirit is telling you to do. Is the spirit telling you to pray right now? Is the spirit telling you to wake up in the, at 2 o'clock in the morning and begin to pray? Is the spirit telling you to do something? Walk with the spirit. So you don't gratify the loss of the flesh. Hey. The work in the spirit, you don't gratify. In other words, you don't honor the flesh. In other words, you don't lift the flesh. You have to work in the spirit. Because the spirit will yield the fruits. Amen. You go to that scripture, you see what the spirit will do. But if you work in the spirit, if you work in the flesh, you gratify the things of the flesh. And what are the things of the flesh? We all know. Jealousy, hatred. Ah, my Akataya. Hey, jealousy, hatred. We don't like this. Ah, I don't like that. I just don't like this person. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It's the flesh. Are you at the church? I just don't like the way she dress. I just don't like the way. Just look at the way she dress. It's the flesh. It's not the spirit. Your flesh is manifesting. I don't like the way she smiles. Mm, why? I don't like the way she dressed. Ah, why? Come on now. It's the flesh manifesting. Let us walk in the spirit. The spirit be joy. The spirit be light. The spirit be peace. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't begin to put your own personal characteristic, personal character alongside the flesh. You must use the word of God. Because it's easy to say, I don't like this person. Ah, it's the flesh. Because you are not the one that made a person. God made a person the way she is. Amen. He is. Person that way. So you don't say, 
is the spirit. The spirit birth spirit. The spirit gives life. The spirit brings spirit. The flesh will birth flesh. It's flesh. One of the things that, 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 that we fight with is our flesh. Our flesh tells us a lot of things. Flesh tells you don't go to church today or don't like the way that man preach. Your flesh is talking. Your flesh is speaking. Your flesh is saying something. Don't go to church today. Oh, you're too tired. It's your flesh. But when the spirit wakes you up, you know, in the bathroom, and during the song, when you're doing your tea, when you're doing your coffee, you're just basking in the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bow your head. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, Lord, for your word. Lord, I know whom I regard that, Lord, you have spoken. That we may, we need to love each other. We need to be gap standers. Stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters in this church. Stand in the gap for Blackburn. Taking territory. Taking territory. Push back what the devil has brought into this land. We push it back in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your word that have come out. To bless, not to curse, to edify. I thank you because, Lord, you have done it. I've not done it, but you have done it. I pray, my dear God, that we will always think of standing in the gap for each one another. We will stand in the gap when our brother is going through pain, when our sister is going through pain, when we are going through things that, that are not of God. I pray, my dear God, that you help us. Kill this flesh. Crucify this flesh, Lord. Crucify the flesh. They want to take over our lives. They want to take territory. They want to take over our lives, Father. Crucify this flesh. And let your spirit abound in us. Let your spirit abound. Let us be sensitive to the spirit. That even when things are about to happen, even when things are about to manifest in the flesh, Father, your spirit will abound. And we will stand strong and say, yes, we overcame him by the, word, by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of the testimony. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless you all. Yeah.